Good evening. We are live at the Celebration Centre Baradal where ZBC is out to curb the scourge of child trafficking. We are launching our documentary today and we're going to catch up with one of the journalists who spent most of his time putting this documentary together, who is Theophilus Chuma. So I would like you to sit back, relax and join us as we take you through all the proceedings of tonight. August 2016, a young boy aged four innocently played behind the backyard of his grandparents' homestead in Hompani, a quiet village located in Kai, some 120 kilometers out of Blawayo, Zimbabwe's second largest city. This is a place that his young life had become so much accustomed to. Little did he know that one day this was going to be different. Consequently, this was also the day that would change his life forever. Someone was watching, hidden under the cover of a forest close to where four children were playing, waiting patiently for a perfect moment to execute an evil plan to snatch one of these children. Awakiwe Akim Mwewe became that innocent victim, stolen right under the watch of his grandparents and trafficked into an unknown destination thousands of kilometers from where he was playing. In this four-month-long investigation, we revisit Awakiwe Mwewe's trafficking case, which until today remains unsolved. The picture that started it all. Everyone including his mother had almost given up on searching for the young boy. In their hearts they had accepted that the boy was dead. That's until Awakiwe's picture circulated on social media till it reached the grandparents through a neighbor who received it from his son in South Africa. Awakiwe had been found in Kenya and taken in at Happy Life Children's Home, an orphanage center in Nairobi, following the arrest of his traffickers at the Namanga border post in Kenya. On the 26th of November 2016, a Kenyan publication, The Standard, confirmed the arrests of Margaret Jumama Gero and her husband, David Ochieng Ometho. According to the reporter, Joaquin Buana, Margaret Jumama Gero and her husband, David Ochieng Ometho, were charged at the Shanzu Law Courts for kidnapping three minors. The couple, according to the Kenyan police, were part of an international child trafficking syndicate that trafficked children to Switzerland. Consequently, this couple was also linked to the abduction and suspected trafficking of Awakiwe from his rural home in Kai. For Nobeke Zilomaseko, Awakiwe's mother, the evidence of his son alive in Kenya was shocking as much as it was the most amazing revelation she had wished for over the last five years since his son disappeared. <laughs> So <laughs> Abusing, 
Nobekezelo left the minor in the custody of his paternal grandparents to remarry after falling out with the boy's father who was incarcerated for stock thefts. Though she has other children from a new marriage, she has never been at peace with the thought of a child away in a foreign land. <laughs> Since the boy's disappearance, she has never gone back to his grandparents' homestead in Hompani. A silent indication, she blames them for the misfortune that befell her son. In Hompani village, we trapped Julius Nguve, Awakiwe's grandfather. At 76, he looks very pale and prefers to spend most of his time locked behind the door of his small bedroom, a place that has also become his closet from where to meditate and pour out his soul. Awakiwe's disappearance has been a prison sentence, one he hopes will be ended by the safe return of his grandchild. Six years on, 12 August is a date that still holds fresh in his mind, even made worse each year he has to be reminded of this fateful day as the clock strikes. Saka gogwaiba apaduza. All right. Ah, Says, 
Hilang jadinya. Hilang jadinya. Tapi aku sedih apa nama? Ah, aku sedih aku na. Eh, eh kecik macam mana? Wah, nang aku. Eh, cecik apa nama? Sudah nang aku. Ah. Oh, dunia orang ke bawah ini dunia orang ke sini. Angkam peran orang 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 ada hero sih dunia. Minta nang aku siapa nang buat orang buat sulap supaya orang tahu. Ia nasi apa nang buat jah. Asem kono lapa, na ngofana ro, o maki abat ah, mina mbizi leko na, wata aki 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 mira po, mira po, ah, kwa kipi, kumbi wa siri hinto, easy. Oo do aso kwa, ah, oo do aso tene, oo kampi aso tene ah, mina yahamba zo, wata abu ya kuno, tifa mbizo, kanto ah ndoto, ndoko na so, kadi. For three days, he was part of the search party consisting of over 20 members, mostly neighbors who launched a massive hunt for the toddler. But the traffickers had used this thick foliage to make good their escape. The only remaining evidence were the footprints of the little boy which just stretched for a little distance before disappearing as they had started. It was now apparent that the boy had gone and now at the mercy of his abductors. Awakiwa's disappearance was a bitter pill to swallow for the family claiming the life of his grandmother who could not bear the pain of losing a grandchild. Her grave lies just a few meters from where her grandchild was playing. Mamu mtu na mamu mtu pili nchini andu zakurum. Na wamu ni wamu mtu ni andu zakurum. Uguti na wamu tangu siri mtu. Ha mtu na mamu mtu pili nchini. Andu zaku zapu makul. I. Na kula mtu agati kuna. Mnyo zasi chela na uguti mtu agati. Na tangu siri mba. Mnyo zimu tu zimu tinga na wamu mtu achoncha. Na mboi kari sada kwa na mtu na mimi. Kumbeo ukona kwa nza ya futi wa choncha banyi uza kuruma futi. Uguta amsebe nzo wa mdo. Mina umcho uji. Choncha banyi umundu. Mina atandu uti government imkwini. Imkwini imnike. Iskwe kwa saki. Mwabu mundu. Tina usuke la kutana. Sasi nga wazipiri kutu mtu ya choncho. Kwa kukutala wa kutuwa lecho. Kutuwa. Babi tata besi nzo ama holi, benga bula ributo, aenzi nchi mtu wake, othala la, kutoa mtu ngamzala, sibesi ngawa zuguto mtu ya chuo chuo tim, mtu ya tengi swa, tewe le noto, sasa ngawa zuguto, siku funde kati siku ugu kuzo, ugu chuo na kwe diiswe, niwe kwe nze. Sabagwazi. Mwabaru kutenga bantu, kuchonchwa nga bantu. Kwenzwe yi kuchona kwe di iswe. Abantu penga sasebe nzi, sibe funu kusebe nzi, sugutua. Nya tengu mundu, nya tatu mundu, tata mapase, sasu, nasu vila, sasu, sasu nga wazi. Yi kuchona kwe di iswe. If this was devastating for the family, the effect on the father was destructive. Coming from serving a prison term, his marriage broken, the pain of losing his only son is tearing him up. Aini sebut tunggu aku. Jadi aku ni yang mesti aku tikam ni dengan ni lewat kuning sebab aku ni muda ni lewat muka. Muda ni lese lese sukses lese ekstasi. Ngambo. So lapa kau na upiran jalan. Eh, ni aku evan zari ni aku. Upu 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 lu sebab aku. Mungkin tu dia zabla alam mang. Dari sini juga aku beli stress ni mang aku. Stress ni mang aku. Sebab aku tengah aku tinggi aku na. Ingat hamba jalan sebab. Emi na kubushunga kuhusu angi zungu la vile ni nazi makona kundi tindi ugu la tuelezi tuelezi mau la la desa lima lonya emasimi mai ukawa kuna zaidi mimi mimi ni ngati ndiya okay 
It was an emotional moment, even for the 24 investigators team. Meeting the, um, our case family in Kai was in, for me, it was an emotional roller coaster. Looking at the fact that, like, um, you know, getting to meet. Uh, for the first time to meet our QS dead. Like, uh, you know, the pain, they say like, men are strong, men are not supposed to cry, they should be able to hold back their emotions. But you could feel the pain that he's feeling, like, uh, like even before uh, getting to talk to him, like, uh, he, he asked me that, um, like, many people have ca have come here and asked us uh, certain questions like uh, it's like they get to uh, force us to relive the moment but nothing gets to be done so like you know i had to sort of like give him the assurance that like uh, i'm gonna try and do my best all i can to make sure that like his voice and even his cries like they they don't just fall on deaf ears awakiwe could have been very much the same age as his cousin and probably going through the same chores as his brother. Yet he is miles away from this family comfort. Revisiting his disappearance gave us some more questions than answers. Hompani village is a community largely dominated by Ndebele speakers and communication would be very difficult for a foreigner. How then was it possible for Margaret and her husband David to carry through their plan? The road network to Nkai is complicated, requiring massive knowledge of the area. And for a foreigner, this alone would have been difficult to pull off without the assistance of a local known to the child. Was this an isolated hit or it was targeted, planned over and over, and just waited for the perfect opportunity? Journalist Kwanele Kumalo intensely covered the story since it started to make headwinds in Zimbabwe. There is a long way to go with this story because even if the kid can be brought back, then there is a question to say those people who abducted the kid we're not Zimbabweans. We're not even staying here in Zimbabwe. They were abducting kids across the, the countries. So the question, mind you, it will be actually saying who took the kids from Kai and gave to those people. Because it must be someone local who knows the area, I think Kai there, who is staying there maybe, or here in Zimbabwe. So those people were not even from Zimbabwe. Because the other kids were not even from Zimbabwe. So there is a long way to go, even if the kids will be brought back to actually answer the question who took the kid here in Zimbabwe, so that the justice will be. These were some of the questions that we took to Nkai police station as we sought more clarity on this case. As we found out, the investigating officer who handled the case was transferred and no one had continued to look at these highly probable chances of a child trafficking syndicate that could have aided these foreigners. What they could confirm was that the docket was still open. We again revisited Hompani village, driving through the night to gather more insight over Awakiwe's disappearance. So, kutewu njalo lo mwenye sizu hula nisa lande, la slande luko kwe masini. So, lo lai, kutu kutu wasuka wa fe lande la mwukulu wa isa hule mas, eh, eka te hila kele leana pagati la. Wasuka wa fe lande le siya kona le masini, ndo wasuka wa fe la tega njani njela la manguazi kona lapa. Honestly, 
while Lulande, Lunia Lana, where Jelavan to know Yaula Kurukupugi, Laconda, Ekani, Lajula Pansley to Faposton. His Akamis is Onga says Jedu, Avan Bonke Vasheba Pagam, Vasheba Hamba, Songa Velam Dua Pega, Mundo and Zayaba, Velama Simmons on his Akamis. Such as I'm getting him, was of two eyes in Tama, what to people see the lack in our child with her. Waham Waki Jim was our figure born. So Lapo Owa would not tell a corner unto an kitchen. Why Kitima are willing at infecting one and will meet on Pam's side, the unity infecting Jane is the moon bad. Mobama fit a kind of so my feet on to an outing into an unanagan Gana Kitima Ganjia. Sugar lap is a corn. Ah, to an asalander, salander, salander, safia window is nanga. Rabamba could have really a girl of my fit a guy among his booty. We will humble the two of an ocean. After that, we are all lost catch of one. Savuela Fulix is a one corn. Salubona a corn in a matin bed. Loyesa, 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 Abandon the sun is a camis is okay. Almost more almost a tight as if it is a crisis, almost if you won't. Hope is what binds them together. The belief that Awakiwe will someday walk back into their lives. Don't Omakoran Bama Lati as a young of a church, see Uncle Mama, would we be Sabala Luxia Conan? I will not talk, book on a town, book a church. I see Dabo. What a boy named Bogget three days. I call never to see if we are seven. Sabbath <laughs> so you go to Saha, we don't do the I Saha, we go to Bang, we go to Soti. But you don't know how to do it. Man, you don't know how to do it. 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 As part of this investigation, we found that the suspected traffickers Margaret Jumama Gero and her husband David Ometho had several cases linking them to a child trafficking racket, which according to the prosecuting authority that handled their case in 2016, stretched within and beyond Kenya. As reported in an article carried by the Standard newspaper in 2016, Awakiwe was one of the three miners suspected to have been trafficked by this jaw. Could the boy still be in Kenya? We dig deeper into this case in our next episode as we travel to Kenya to probe this issue from the point Awakiwe is said to have entered Kenya through Namanga border post. Beganella, Unzima, or cool, when Talan Cabang and Chowoch, his woes of Tumtana and Zambona. The burden that I'm facing is just too much for me. I'm always thinking whether I would see my child again before I die. This pains and makes me think a lot. Sometimes I find myself losing sleep, and then I start thinking it's really painful. I 
I think a lot. It's been five years, and I've been thinking. It's so painful. Even when I try to occupy myself, I can't escape this torture. The most painful part is that I last saw my child when he was very young. It's surprising. We never knew someone can be stolen and traded for a profit. We never knew this. It remains one of the unsolved mysteries for Zimbabwe. The disappearance of a minor from his grandparents' homestead in Nkai, in Zimbabwe's Matebele North province, almost six years ago. The torture that relatives and victims of human trafficking are exposed to has been laid bare with a 32-year-old woman from Inyati in Matebele North province struggling to reunite with her son who was forcibly taken to Kenya in 2016 at the tender age of four. When his story started to make headwinds on both local and international media, we traced the incident to Nkai, gathering as much information on the boy's disappearance. But there's one question that continued to pop up in our investigation. What happened to the boy since the point his suspected traffickers were arrested at Namanga border post in Kenya? We followed this to Kenya to find out the intimate details of this connection the only probable link that will help us understand the whereabouts of our Kiwenguwe. Namanga border post the land border linking Tanzania into Kenya, a distance of 2,622 kilometers from Harare. From Zimbabwe, one has to go through Zambia, then into Tanzania, and finally get to Namanga border post. The only other route will be to use the Mozambican route, closer to the sea, which would cover more days before getting to Namanga border post. This is the border point where the suspected traffickers, Margaret Jumama Gero and her husband, David Ochieng Ometho, were arrested for trafficking three minors, among them the young Zimbabwean boy Awaki Wengnude from Nkai. Magero and Ometho would later be tried for this offense at the Shanzu Court in Mombasa, which is 500 kilometers from where they were arrested. A court verdict made from the Shanzu Court is reported to have assigned the three trafficked minors under the care of Happy Life Children's Home in Nairobi. Two of these minors are said to have been reunited with their families. While there is no evidence the third child was ever reunited with his family or transferred to another orphanage. This is where the mystery starts. As we found out from the Zimbabwean investigating officer who followed up the case since it broke out in 2016, according to the Happy Life Children's Home, there was never any documentation of a child under their custody to match Awakiwe. We followed it up with the said um, orphanage and uh, we made inquiries through the phone of which they denied to ever ever um, met this boy or adopted a boy from Zimbabwe. So it went silent in 2016. Uh, six, down, six years down the line, it resurfaced through social media again. And now uh, it also surfaced in the, it was also reported in the media in Zimbabwe. So we had now, we were forced to take it now more seriously then that's when I was tasked by the ambassador to go and visit the orphanage physically. I went there, 
I think on the 15th of January, I made the matron and I narrated my story, of which, again, they denied ever adopting Hakim from Zimbabwe. And I was taken through the process of adoption in Kenya, of which I was told Happy Life Children's Home is in Nairobi County. And Hakim is allegedly uh, came through Kenya via Namanga border post, which is another county from Nairobi. So they said there was no way Hakim could have been brought to Happy Life Children's Home. So for now, what we have done as an embassy is to write a note verbal through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs because we are not allowed to talk to any other government department other than foreign affairs. And then there are even more startling revelations made by the orphanage, according to the investigating officer. The records at Happy Life uh, Children's Home do not really correspond with um, the age group that uh, Akim is supposed to, to have. The final details on that? Uh, the children that are at uh, Happy Life, it's only zero to three. And after zero to three, they will transfer to the sister uh, orphanage, the, which is in Juja, Happy Life Juja. That takes from four up to eight, 12 years. But according to their transfer records, there was no transfer that transpired from 2016 to 2022. Unless otherwise, there is another orphanage which we are still exploring with a similar name to Happy Life. The case is now delicate involving the Foreign Affairs Ministry in Kenya. So we seek audience with Happy Life Children's Home through the Zimbabwean Embassy. The orphanage declines the interview referring all questions to offices that are said to be now seized with the matter. Because of how how the government of, how the people of Zimbabwe would say had really, were really on my case, uh -huh. wait to stop talking about the issue. Uh -huh. To if, if anybody calls me regarding the issue, I refer them to the authorities. So in this case, the authorities, the DCI and the Ministry of Foreign yeah. Affairs. Yeah, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the D Directorate of Children Services in my house. Directorate of? Children Services, they also are dealing with the case. Could there be a mistake on the name of the orphanage where Awakiwe is said to have been taken? We search for all registered orphanages in Nairobi, hoping there will be a chance there is another one which may be closer to what we are searching for. Out of this long list, it appears there is only one that starts with Happy, and this is Happy Life Children's Home. We set out to see the orphanage in Roy Sambu, which is some 30 kilometers out of Nairobi city center. Though set in a high density suburb, the orphanage has maintained its privacy, cast between a building that offers it a quietness from the hustle of its surroundings. The story of Awakiwe is one that has generated a lot of interest. We tried to seek the answers here in Nairobi, Kenya, going as far as the supposed children's home that uh, he is supposed to be. Now, this is not exactly the place, Happy Life Children's Home, where Awakiwe is supposed to be. Unfortunately, he is nowhere to be found. Leaving us with more questions as to exactly where the boy Awakiwe may be. He could be anywhere here in Nairobi. As if by fate, our attention is drawn to a newspaper headline in the People's Daily, published on the 31st of March 2022. Two people had been arrested in connection with the kidnapping and killing of a toddler. Our source tells us cases like these are common, run by powerful syndicates. Let me tell you, this country has, it has even cartels. If you try and talk ill about them or you touch something they are doing, they just kill you. And nothing will happen. We had such cases here where people are like operating children's home in the name of their helping, but you go, you, you find they are selling those kids. We have had, it was even aired in Citizen News uh, in a local TV station. You find most people they are like putting up a children's home 
pretending that they are helping them, but they are selling kids. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we have had such cases. And now the government had to come in and now to put stronger rules. If you want to operate a children's home, you must do this and this and this. And you, you must also have someone from the government who is monitoring your daily yeah. operations. Yeah. It's a big syndicate because it was a coalition between the nurses, in the hospital, doctors. Like you give birth to a kid, your wife gives to a kid, and you are told the kid was born when already dead. Okay. But they take a kid who has already died, they take your kid who is alive, they sell, they sell that kid to another person. Especially okay. when they, they, under, they see like you are not capable of fighting for your justice. Yes, a week. Mm. A week? Yes, I'm talking of a week. <laughs> no, sir, man. These are bodies of kids. No, nah, no. Uh, like kids were five. Adults were many. Could there be a link between Awakiwe's suspected traffickers and these cartels? The mystery deepens when we try to join the dots between where the traffickers were arrested and the orphanage which was assigned Awakiwe. One of the first details is that uh, Kenya itself has more than 40 something tribes. Now, for somebody at uh, Namanga border post to be able to identify from a first instance that this child is either Zimbabwean or South African, which is what they wrote, we found that a little bit intriguing and a lot of interest. Because if I were to hear any other Kenyan language, it would be very difficult for me to decipher which language it is. So from then on, we then looked at it and we said, well, look, let us follow up and hear uh, what is going on. Um, Again, when we take the next stage, this person is arrested in Namanga. Between Namanga and Nairobi is 120 kilometers, but the court case is heard and happens in Mombasa. Mombasa to Nairobi is, uh, Mombasa to Nairobi is 400 and something kilometers. Why would somebody arrested in uh, Na Namanga not go to Kajiado Lokot, which is 40 kilometers from Namanga border post? Um, again, when we follow the court proceeding as for the from the report the court proceeding then says the judge after giving a determination that the child was indeed abducted they then instructed that the child be taken to nairobi now we are again going to to say from namanga to mombasa from mombasa they say the child must be kept in nairobi Although there is a difference between coincidence and causality, these loopholes generate a lot of conspiracy theories. We remain worried and also very puzzled as to why there are so many gaps in the story. Um, and if indeed there was such a story, what has happened to the child? We still need to get a closure. We still need to get to find out exactly what went on. These revelations fueled rather than allayed the enigma surrounding Awakiwe's abduction. We retraced the case to 2016 when it was tried at the court in Shanzu to find out if indeed the case was handled there. Our source confirms the case involving the two suspects was indeed held at the court. I talked to that magistrate. Okay. But then she said, yes, she handled it, she convicted them. And that's all. She, she doesn't, she didn't follow up on anything. So we, she advised me to go to Chanzu, the court where she, they were charged, huh? All right. To go to Chanzu and then try to ask. But then the problem is that we still don't have the case number. Without the case number, it becomes hard. But we can still try with the names because we have the names. Yeah, sure, sure. Day and night. This investigation worked to unravel the mystery behind Awakiwe's whereabouts. But every corner appeared to be a dead end. We tried everything else. We appeared to be hitting a brick wall. And no one seems to understand where exactly the boy group is. We are left with more questions than answers. And uh, the enigma surrounding the boy's disappearance continues to grow each minute and every hour that we are here in Kenya. Child trafficking is a huge problem in Kenya, which is also used 
as a transit point for human trafficking. Trace Kenya is one organization that has worked to counter human trafficking. We probe the complexity of these cartels that are responsible for the disappearance of hundreds of children both within and without Kenya's borders. Kenya is a transit point. It's also a source uh, point for children trafficking and it's also a destination. And uh, the case you just mentioned uh, where a child came all the way and came through the Namanga border point. Uh, ordinarily our border points are only manned in very specific places. You know, uh, in, in this case in the, uh, with, the, with, with the border with the Tanzania for example, there are only four border points uh, which you can you know one is Lunga Lunga, the other one is uh, Taveta, then Namanga and you go a, a little up north you have a place called Isibania. Now uh, and consider this is almost 300 kilometers of unmanned border point. So the, the children from all, all over the place uh, use Kenya uh, partly because it's a pretty liberal uh, country you know coming in and out is not a very big deal particularly if you are if you're African uh, it's not a very big deal. If you are if you're non-African and you pose as a tourist, it's probably a, a great destination uh, for tourism. So, so this this uh, tourists, I mean, uh, traffickers have taken advantage of this, and uh, therefore make our, our, our you know any person coming into Kenya and uh, will unlikely get molested by the police or anyone, unless you know you commit some other crime or unless it was reported that uh, you, you are on the run. So that's probably what could have happened. Could it be that Awakiwe was a victim of circumstances? For all we know, the orphanage that he was presumed to be denies ever admitting a foreign national during that period. With all this evidence, we again sought clarity with the Zimbabwean embassy in Kenya. We said, let's write to foreign affairs here in Kenya, asking them as to assist us. And also, we wanted them to uh, give us uh, authority to go and visit the orphanage. So that is official. And, uh, you know, and also we gave them the names of the perpetrators. And we wanted them uh, to tell us if, uh, how we can uh, get in touch with that to help our investigations. So they, 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 they verbally, they, 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 they reached the embassy and they told us that they had referred the issue to uh, child welfare here and they were also sent to, um, uh, to IOM and also um, uh, the Home Affairs. We are still waiting for an answer from, from them, but they acknowledged our, 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 our not verbal. We are here, it's priority, and we'll keep on following up until we know what really has happened. Mm -hmm. But there seems to be... Uh, you know, some loopholes somewhere where we don't really know. Back home, Awakiwe's family sits on the edge, hoping that someone will come with the good news that Awakiwe has been found and will be reuniting with them. As it turns out, this is probably something his grandfather will never hear in his lifetime. For now, Awakiwe can be anywhere in Nairobi. His issue now being followed up through the Department of Criminal Investigation and the Directorate of National Child Services. Magero and Ometho remain the critical pieces of this jigsaw, yet they too appear to have disappeared from the radar. What then could have happened to the boy Awakiwe? This is the biggest question on everyone's minds. So what's next? 
let me first of all salute my colleague ministers are ably represented here, the Minister of Primary and Secondary Education, Honorable Evelyn Yofu, and also the Minister of Home Affairs, uh, Cultural and, and Cultural and Heritage, also they are ably represented by government officials right here. The Ambassador of, of India in Zimbabwe, the Excellency Mr. Vijay Kanduja, the Ambassador of UAE in Zimbabwe, His Excellency Dr. Jasim Kwasim, the Ambassador of Sweden, the Excellency Mrs. Asa Peson, the Ambassador of Palestine in Zimbabwe, His Excellency Tauma Almasari, the Ambassador of Angola, to Zimbabwe, His Excellency Abitino Tawadesi, Deputy Representative of this program, Zainabi Adam, and representatives from UNICEF, representatives from Ministries of Primary and Secondary Education and Home Affairs, the Director of Pakare Pai at Center, Mbiyawamu, Ms. Desimutuku Tsimagadi, ZPC Board Member, who is representing Chairperson Advocate AJ Singh and other board members who are here at TCT, Langaran BZ and Comrade uh, David Popatla. The ZBC Corporate Secretary standing in for the CEO, Mrs. Patricia Mchengwa, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Trade, Mrs. Maria, ZRP Spokesperson, Assistant Commissioner Paul Nyati, who is here with us, Youth Ambassador, Zimbabwe, Young Ambassadors, Ms. Ruyen Bochinzo, who is also here with us, Partners, coming from Ministry of Foreign Affairs, UNICEF, ZRP, Childline, RepC, Universal of Peace Federation, and most importantly, uh, our own ZPC journalist and uh, producer of this documentary, Chuma and your crew. I really salute you for the work you have put into this.
It's not easy. We saw how we struggled going all that far. And still, the question is there is the child alive? Will that child ever come back home? So there's a lot for it to be done. The government of Zimbabwe, its departments and institutions are immensely involved in the investigation of several trafficking cases and is doing all it can to ensure it ends this step falling out of practice through the enactment of policies and pieces of legislation such as the Trafficking and Persons Act of 2014. And this government will also have clear and cogent plans to combat human, human trafficking. The Trafficking in Persons National Plan Section for 2021-2025 was recently presented in Cabinet and, uh, by the Minister of Home Affairs and an interministerial committee chaired by the Minister of Home Affairs will oversee the formulation and implementation of National Plan Section whose membership includes also the Ministry of Information. Ladies and gentlemen, trafficking in persons national plan of action is the framework which is established to ensure a well-coordinated approach in responding to trafficking in persons and that is with four pillars which are prevention, protection, prosecution and partnerships. These pillars render support, protection and assistance to the victims. This is in line with international standards and laws such as the Palermo Protocol, which is a United Nations Convention against transnational organized crime. This is to prevent, suppress, and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children. Furthermore, Zimbabwe's Trafficking in Persons National Plan of Action is in line with the Constitution of Zimbabwe. The Trafficking in Persons Act and also other United Nations conventions. As government, we have also tightened security at all border points to end unauthorized persons from organized criminal gangs likely to be fairly child victims of human trafficking. My ministry is ensuring that community radio stations, as you are aware, we have issued out 14 community radio stations. And we started off by issuing those licenses to much the next communities. The idea being that we don't want to leave anybody behind, neither do we want to leave any place behind. Community radios are very critical. This is where information should move very fast. You saw we launched already a community radio in Chimanemani. We also launched a community radio in Yangani. Not just because uh, we felt it was uh, it was not fair or anything, but we know it was about cycle and poly areas. And by launching those community reviews, we have also now installed entry systems. We know what we, what happened in March 2019 when that uh, uh, disaster happened in uh, Cycle and Eli in, in Chimanamana, which left a lot of people's lives gone. People's livelihoods, homes, bridges, homes, schools. And so, by learning community radios, we are making sure that wherever we go, we train influencers. They may be teachers, they may be traditional leaders, just to make sure that information goes very fast. And when a child disappears, and when strangers come to a community, we are also training them to quickly report because they know each other in communities in which they live in. And so if they are strangers, they should quickly report. So with these community regulations, in most, we have made sure that in most border areas, uh, we have established those. So that people will stay well informed and address the information, especially when it comes to strangers moving around in the neighborhood, when children uh, disappear, all kinds of uh, natural disasters, and uh, also man-made disasters. So our community radios will serve a very important role in making sure that information is uh, displaced uh, very fast. The government of His Excellency, Dr. Ejim Nagawa, is truly an inclusive government as it is pushing the idea of leaving no one behind and no place behind. Every 
everybody is important, every community is important, every language in our country is important, and as such, we will make sure that community radios, they actually broadcast in the local language, so that everybody understands what's going on. So it is instructive that the ZPC has seen fit to support this effort. The information shared about human trafficking on mainstream, social and digital media ought to inform children and the generality of the population about the evil of human trafficking. The interventions which are witnessing today as ZPC launches this self kids campaign is a true testimony that the government and its institutions are dedicated to advance the national vision to improve public safety and order is stipulated in the NDS-1. If one channel is served by this effort and partnerships, then we will have achieved a great thing because every child matters as they are the future of our nation, the future of the world. I really thank you for listening, for attending, for and once again, congratulations to CPC for launching this campaign. We've just watched the documentary and right now I'm standing with the ambassador of Palestine. Good evening, sir. How are you? How was the documentary? Uh, good evening. First of all, I want to present my congratulations to the ZPC family for making this brilliant movie. Uh, actually, the idea of the movie is very important, not only for the Zimbabweans, but also for uh, the Africans and everywhere because the problem or the issue of the trafficking the children and abusing them. Unfortunately, it's international problem, but what we are concentrating here, that um, this uh, efforts uh, that you lead it uh, in uh, Zimbabwe as uh, the media and the ZBC that represent the, 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 the media of the, of the government, actually it's highly appreciated and I think all of us um, say what you say at the end of the movie, the idea of the movie, that uh, together I think we can uh, do something. And uh, also, I want to uh, mention that uh, the efforts of the government of Zimbabwe, especially with the, in the Second Republic um, uh, uh, time, I think it's very um, appreciated uh, or highly appreciated in uh, 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 focusing on this issue, uh, the trafficking uh, children, and we hope and we pray together uh, that uh, all our children will be saved, and uh, we uh, uh, pray together for all the victims uh, uh, and their families who suffered from the children uh, trafficking and uh, the children uh, abusing. Thank you so much. There you've had it. Thank you so much, sir, and thank you for speaking to us here at ZBC.
by Assistant Commissioner Paul Nyati at the launch of the ZBC documentary. Sir, I'm interested to know, how did you find today's documentary? Uh, thank you, Natasha. Uh, firstly, at the Zimbabwe Republic Police, we want to applaud the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation for this uh, initiative, the Social Responsibility Program, where we are focusing on child trafficking, where we are focusing on the safety of children, these are real cases. And uh, by joining the Zimbabwe Public Police, by partnering the Zimbabwe Public Police and other stakeholders, it shows that uh, besides gathering news, besides being informative, the Zimbabwe Broadcast Corporation is also concerned with the safety of children. And uh, we want to assure the ZBC management we want to assure all the stakeholders who are part of this initiative that the Zimbabwe Public Police will certainly support, will certainly work together with the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation to ensure that child trafficking cases are brought to the fore. And uh, the campaigns which we are going to be conducting, we include ZBC. Uh, as we conduct investigations, we also want the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation to play a piece of the role. So definitely, definitely, this is a good initiative which we feel that it was long overdue. 
Thank you so much for your comments, this, uh, and thank you so much for all that you do for the community and safeguarding our children and every other citizen. I'm now joined by the picture editor, Jeremiah Mawoso, also known as a horsepower, as the team likes to refer to him as, with his beautiful wife. So I'm interested to know what made you join this production? You know, what made me join uh, the production, I, I was invited to work on the editing uh, because Theophilus Chuma saw the potential that was in me in putting pictures together uh, the way that I organize pictures with the voice so he came I was across uh, the board I was working with the TV productions then he came he asked my boss if I could work with him on the documentary then my boss gave him a nod so that's when I started working on the a documentary with Theophilus Chuma Okay, I'm also interested to know, you know, sitting in the background watching this documentary, it was a total emotional roller coaster for me. Did you experience any emotions? Did it affect your work in any way watching uh, the documentary after you had put it together and whilst you were working on it? Yeah, of course, as a father of three, uh, knowing the pain and feeling the pain of uh, losing a child, it was very, very emotional. At times, uh, you would feel some tears uh, coming down your eyes. Then that, that is what gave me the drive and the passion. And it further pushed my creative juices to put the pictures together so that they could make sense and bring out those emotions so that everyone else could feel what I was feeling and bring it close to what Theophilus was saying because editing is all about uh, putting uh, pictures on top of a voice that is uh, trying to express an emotion and in a way you have to match those emotions with pictures. So it also helped me as I felt those emotions to put the pictures together. Well, you did an amazing job there because, you know, watching the final draft, I, I said to myself, you know, a lot of great talent was put in, in this production and you had a certificate of appreciation and that was uh, looking at you now and hearing your side to it, it was well, well deserved. We are still live at the Celebration Centre Borodell and I'm here joined by Theophilus Chuma and his beautiful wife. So I'm interested to know, what was your experience like travelling all the way from Nkai all the way down to Kenya? Right, thank you so much uh, Natasha for having us. Indeed, uh, this was uh, the most revealing experience uh, that uh, I have undertaken as a journalist. You see, the motivation was not only out of journalism instincts, but as a parent, I also have um, that kind of emotion and attachment to children. I do have uh, three beautiful kids, and I do not wish to see any harm coming to those kids. And so when I heard about Awakiwe, I took it upon myself to have an in-depth look into how a boy could just disappear into thin air without any trace. So, like you rightly stated, we went to Nkai, uh, that's some distance from the capital city of Harare. The road is quite bad, but we endured all the processes to go and sit down and talk to the family. The mother, the father, the grandfather, who is uh, quite aged, is now about 77 uh, since the last time we spoke. And, you know, all the emotion that uh, they showed during our interview they are pained by the disappearance of uh, their child and you know just 
talking to them and them posing the most difficult question to me because they then asked, when are we going to be seeing our boy? You know, it's a difficult question, one that I could not even answer, but I promised them that I would do my best to go an extra mile and find out exactly what happened. And so from Kai, we then went to Nairobi. Nairobi, uh, the capital, is quite some distance, again, from the point where the traffickers are, are said to have entered with um, Awakiwe. That's some 500 kilometers. And so we tried to trace uh, that whole journey from uh, Namanga border post mm -hmm. uh, to Nairobi, to okay. the orphanage that uh, Awakiwe is said to have um, been placed after the verdict was passed uh, in, in the Shanzo court. Okay. And, you know, the details, though, in Nairobi, Kenya, are sketchy. And even as we interviewed uh, the locals there, they really exposed uh, some disturbing news. Kenya is notorious for child trafficking. And, you know, just the week that we entered, there were 25 ritual killings involving minors. And so our fears were aroused, you know. Was this the same fate that our Kiwa could have faced? We wondered whether uh, the traffickers would have been so ruthless to go that route. And so when we were investigating this in Nairobi, we then went as far as the orphanage where Awaki was said to have been placed. There we were not given audience. They shut us out and so we sought the help of the Zimbabwean embassy. They tried to call, yet still they were denied even uh, a visit to the orphanage. And so that then left a number of gaps. We even spoke to Zimbabwean locals who are based in Kenya. They were the ones who made noise about it when the story broke out. And um, they are still making noise. The Zimbabwean embassy is still running around trying to seek uh, the finer details regards where exactly Awakiwe could have been. And so it's, it's, it's one story that has really shown me um, that, uh, you know, child trafficking is not something that we can just talk about and ignore. We really need to work hard to fight this vice and eradicate it completely. True, I must thank you so much for traveling and experiencing all those challenges that you went through just to get this story. Thank so we so thank much. you so much there. And to the woman of the house for letting your husband go for so long, we thank you as well. And we've come to an end of what we call an amazing production at the Celebration Center Bardell. ZBC has de definitely, uh, you know, uh, taken a step further in surging the curb of child trafficking. My name is Natasha Bennett. Thank you so much for joining us and being a part of this documentary. Do spread the word and get it out there that child trafficking should be no more. Have a very good evening. Good night.